Hey Flosstube, it's Julie the Gulf Coast Stitcher. Today is Monday, June 18th and I'd like to welcome you to my channel. It's been a whirlwind morning as um, most of you know today was Mirabilia Madness in celebration of their 25th um, anniversary. Things went crazy. There was a release of five charts, um, previously out of print charts and new. there were some new things. Um, so I ran that as fairly as I could possibly think of how to do it through the Gulf Coast Stitches community Facebook page. So huge benefit for those of you who are members of the community page already. It is just a great group. Everyone's kind, nice. Um, I can't even begin to tell you how proud I am um, that it's a place that we all can gather and really there hasn't been too much. I haven't seen any drama, so that's awesome. So come join the Facebook group if you haven't. There's always benefits to being, um, you know, on an in, kind of on the inside scoop of things. Um, all my Lady of the Flag charts have been spoken for and paid for. Now, I put out a video this morning before I posted the album stating that, you know, I wasn't responsible for internet speeds or refresh rates or any of that stuff. So some of you, um, saw that you were like second or third or fourth on your browser, but I went based off of, you know, my list. So I made a paper list. I have it here. Um, I also said on the video that I would not be posting the winners to the Facebook group. And let me tell you why. I've been a claimant winner on another Facebook group page. And as soon as it was revealed who, who all got the charts, I was inundated with people asking me for copies, which is illegal, um, asking me to buy the chart at incredibly high marked up rates, and that's not what I'm about, and that's not what the Gulf Coast Stitches community page is about. So winners are not posted and announced on that page, and that's why. And as a shop owner, that's how I'm going to do business. Um, I'm really sorry for those of you who felt like you were number, you know, seven, eight, nine, ten on your page, and it didn't come across on my page that way. There's nothing I can do about it, as I alluded to in the video prior to posting the album. So, that's what it is. Um, I have to think that there will be another round of printing on these. It just, I mean, as a business major currently in college, I can tell you that it makes no sense whatsoever, no business sense for the distributors to only allow shops to get 10 copies of these high, highly demanded charts at one time. It does create demand in the market, obviously. Um, I don't think that's an issue with these uh, charts. They've been in demand since they came out. I think, and, and I'm just speculating here as a business-minded person, my assumption is that the distributors um, are making it possible for all shop owners to have an opportunity to take care of their customers. Because if you just said, okay, and I'm just using them as an example because we know they're a powerhouse in, in the industry. If you just said, one, two, three stitch can buy as many copies as they want of Lady of the Flag, they may have the means um, and the lines of credit available at these shops to purchase, I don't know, how many thousands, right? And then that depletes the distributor and other shops like us, like myself, um, they would be gone before we'd have the opportunity. That happened with um, the Blackbird Design Home for the Holidays book. I can tell you when I first opened the shop, I, I made a short run order, they came in and then all of a sudden they were out of stock. So I started contacting the distributors and they were like, oh, you know, some of the other shops completely buy all of the inventory we had. So excuse me, I think that could be one reason that they did it. And another reason is just the sheer volume, um, the expected volume, like they, they can satisfy 10 copies per shop and know that they can do that. They know their limits. They can get that done, get them all out. And then I would have to hope that there would be another, um, another run. So if there is, and you are on my alternate list, so what I did was once the Lady of the Flag hit 20 um, claimants, I took the photo down because it was just, I mean, there's no sense in leaving it up longer. That's what I said I was going to do in the video prior to releasing it. So that's how I did it. So um, the first 10 people got 
claims on it and then the alternates, the top, the other 10 are alternates and I will give them first dibs. Um, the thought was if somebody didn't pay, then I would go down the list, but everybody paid because this is a great group of stitchers. Um, everyone paid, so now it will be, that that list will be the top 10 that I will offer the charts to should there be a reprint or a possibility to repurchase. Like I said, I can't imagine why there wouldn't be. Like, what sense would it make for a distributor to... Um, not do that once the initial flush went through all of the stores. But I have no, that's just a hunch on my part. I have no verification of that whatsoever. So um, again, congratulations to everyone who scored a copy that it was their unicorn. Um, and I still have, um, let's see, I've got them all written down. Butterfly Fairy is still available. Queen Mermaid. Seaside Kingdom, which that is a beautiful chart. I mean, I, I didn't, I'm didn't realize how pretty that was. And that has a huge embellishment pack. Fairy Moon, the 25th anniversary, and Lady Mir Mirabilia. Lady Mirabilia is absolutely stunning as well. So the pictures aren't that great. I worked with what I had to from the distributors, and I just wanted to get it up. So um, on the website or on the Facebook page as soon as I can. So you guys can all look and see. And congratulations to the winners. Thank you so much for everybody paying. Um, I'm sorry, like I said, if you're if you're on the alternate list, um, I hope that you find one somewhere between now and then. But if not, you'll be the first people to be um, notified off of my list. So that's it for Mirabilia Madness. Um, so, well, that's not it. If you are a member of the Facebook uh, Gulf Coast Stitches community page, um, there's an album. You can still me, please, the ones that I still have, and I will invoice you. Um, I will list the whatever's left on my shop site after they come into me and I fulfill the orders. So whatever's left will go on the shop site. So if you don't do Facebook or you don't want to be a community page member, you may still get the opportunity whenever they go onto the page. Um, Michelle Garrett is an admin on my Facebook page as well as myself, and we are not accepting um, new members to the community until... We get all the stuff settled um, because, like, that's the right thing to do. Um, whenever um, I thought of how I was going to do this, that's the best thing I could think was to take care of you guys who have take, taken such good care of me. Um, and we will reopen um, the group, of course, uh, once we satisfy all the orders and everyone's had the opportunity to, to shop the album. So um, it will open... I don't know, probably like in the next day or so, we'll take orders again, or not orders, you know what I mean. You can get into the group again, and then you'll be poised to be in there the next time there's something awesome happens like this. So it's a super active group. People post pictures of their happy mail. They post pictures of their stitchy progress. They're really kind to each other. So if you're looking for a stitch group that's not huge, I think we have like 200-ish members um, where you can really be a part of the conversations, it's a great place. So that's it for that. Um, what else is exciting? Um, Midwest Stitchers Retreat. So I'm going to be there. I can't believe it. I've never been to Minneapolis. I've never been to a retreat. I'm, I'm in the EGA, as you guys know. So I do go to stitch ins and things like that. But this is like a full on, um, we're flying. Uh, my dear friend Robbie and I will be flying, um, to Minneapolis and we'll be joining everyone in October. So I'm so excited. Like we had tried to go to a different retreat that was full and um, we got on the waiting list and it just didn't come to pass. And I was kind of bummed about it, but really it was everything happens for a reason because this retreat is slap full of all the stitchers that I can't wait to meet. So um Put me on your list to say hello to. Everybody needs to know I'm a hugger. You need to know that out, out right off the bat. Um, yeah, so that's super exciting. So we'll be there um, Friday, Saturday, Sunday, as far as I know. I think that's the plan. We may throw Thursday in, but right now it's Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, so I cannot wait. Like, I'm, I don't need, I'm not even going to pack a ton of stitching because I know we're going to spend so much time visiting and um, getting to know each other in real life that there probably won't be as much stitching going on. Um, and then Robbie reminded me that now I have to finish a small for the exchange. 
and I have to come up with some door prizes. So she reminded me it's just more stuff on my to do list. But you know what, I, I wouldn't have it any other way. I'm super excited about it. So we're meeting tomorrow to finalize all of our I shouldn't say finalize because like we just got on the list and got got our deposits done yesterday. But we're going to get together to like work out logistics and to stitch and chat and all that stuff. So that's coming. I received some wonderful stitchy kindness this week. Um, first of all, I'll just start at the beginning, right? That's what that's what you should do. I'm probably going to drop everything on the floor. Okay, so Leslie Hurley sent me, look at this, put a bird on it project bag. Birds and butterfly. And I mean, is this not just totally my style? Leslie, you nailed it. I love this. Um, thank you so much. And inside, I got an awesome card with macaroons on it. And she also um, sent me some silks from Silks For You, which, and they're on thread drops, which I really want to buy. I really want to make these. Um, Kitten Stitcher said that you can, like, she got a punch to make them or you can buy them online, but look how cute. This is super handy. Like, I love that. And the, these silks, I'm, I'm talking about, I could just sit here and pet them. So she sent me some silks and a project bag and a lovely card. And thank you so much, Leslie, um, for everything you do for the community and as awesome as you've been to me. So thank you very much. Um, let's see, what else did I get? Hmm. <gasps> You know what I don't have handy is I received um, a stitch starter from Betty Sweet. Um, it's beautiful. It has a bird on it. I'll have to show it on my next video because I don't. Oh, I think I see it. Hold on. Don't move. Okay. Yes, I did see it. So, got this lovely card, so cute, from Betty. She's a customer, a frequent commenter, and just a lovely person. She sent me this stitch gauge starter, and this came from the Cross Stitch Peddler, and it has a bird on it, and it's so pretty. And I wanted to show you guys, so on my Stitchy Progress, I guess now is a good time to show that. I'm all over the place this morning, but this has been a crazy, like, whirlwind intense morning but it's been great okay so I commissioned Dan aka Dan the man my Dan the man to make me a stitch starter because this is my stitchy progress on tr some trust in chariots I'm, I'm really moving her along it's sniff your ex dude fabric moment. Mm. So I'm moving along on this. And as you can see, I may have walked up centering it. And I got, I did not get anywhere near like I should have started if I would have had a handy stitch gauge. And I used a counting pin and I somehow, like I said, I just walked it up. So I should have started like at this point. And I clearly did not. So I don't know if my pin shifted or I don't know what the heck happened. But um, it's going to be okay. I'm not redoing anything. I'm going to roll with it. Um, so before I received this in the mail from Betty, I commissioned Dan to... I was like, you have to make me something. Like I don't care if it's a piece of wood or whatever it is that I can fit in. You know, so I know. So he created this piece of plexi, and it has little holes in it. And I didn't even see a stitch starter with holes in it before. Like, this is just something that that I credit, like, Dan with coming up with this. Obviously, it wasn't an original idea because I got one in the mail from, from Betty. But it's clear, which I love. And the holes are at, so you could see, you know, you're going to do it this way. So the holes are at two inches and two and a half inches and then the farthest most point would be three inches so if this is something you'd be interested in like it's no frills it's not fancy 
these will be going on to the shop because he bought enough plexi to make like 20, I think. Um, I mean, su such a easy gadget. It's not near as beautiful as the one from the Stitch Peddler, but it's very um, effective, right? It works. So if you, if, if you would benefit from something like this, um, keep your eyes peeled because whenever I get him to, this was his prototype. Whenever we um, do more and he cut it and he filed it so it's not sharp. It's Whenever I get more, um, I'll be sharing those with you guys. Maybe I'll do some stitchy kindness. Maybe I'll put them on the shop or both. My hair is a hot mess today because it is, I don't know what the humidity percentage is, but it is hot. It is hot. It's hot inside the house with the air condition on. That's, that's how hot it is. So that was my one whip that I've worked on this week. Um, you guys know I had to do some traveling this week. I took it with me to the hotel. It was lovely. The hotel had a stitchy light. Well, it was a reading light, but we know that that means stitchy light for us, right? That was attached to the headboard that was like on a flexi arm and it came down perfectly. I, I came home and I was like, I might have to put a stitchy light on my headboard. Yeah. Or behind the bed for sure because it was awesome okay so that's my stitchy progress I showed you my bag from Leslie fat cat flossing and then um, the multi crafty hermit um, I've seen info about her bags y'all know I love a good project bag I'm a mama Joan fan from way back and I was blown away once again, I'm blown away by the skills of anyone on a sewing machine because that's not my jam. I don't have one. I don't know how to do it. I'm not really interested in learning how to do it because I don't need something else. I don't need anything else. So I got, um, Nani sent me like the most beautiful handmade card and she wrote me a lovely note inside she sent me some perforated paper cards, which were awesome. Some thread keep tags. And y'all, here it comes. I'm going to save my favorite one for the last. So this is the Sarah Brazier, the bag she made for Sarah Brazier. So it'll hold a um, hands across the C chart. And there's been a lot of drama going on with that. We'll talk about that later. But um, it will hold a hands across the C chart. Look how pretty that is. That's just my style so much. And I love that y'all know that. Like, here's Leslie's bag. So Leslie saw this and was like, this is Julie's style. And Nani, I mean, can you guys see a theme here? Definitely my style. I love, like, the romantic florals. It's beautiful. So that was um, my large bag. And then I got um, some smaller bags because these bags are, I mean, wonderful for smaller charts. Look at that. I love this. Nani has a beautiful taste in fabrics, y'all. And she does her, she does not have an Etsy shop that I'm aware of. She does her sales on Instagram. Bit confusing to figure out what's available. Um, but I will say that she's awesomely responsive. So she posts a bunch of bags and you see people saying, oh, me, please. And I want one of those. It's kind of difficult to discern what's left. But if you shoot her a message, she'll send you a picture of what's left. That's what I did. Look at this one. Mmm. Doesn't that just say like Golden Girls, Florida? Y'all know I'm a Florida girl. I'm a Northwest Florida girl, but this this says Fort Lauderdale, um, cheesecake, friends. I love this. So I got that one. And then she sent me a free one. And she said this was pomegranates, but I think it's figs. What do y'all think? Figs or pomegranates? I think I saw that someone said pomegranates on... Um, Instagram, but in my mind, this is figs, and I love it, and this is just a little teeny bag. I mean, this is a little teeny one. I can put my scissors, and and I love vinyl front bags. I love the cloth bags, too. Don't get me wrong. I mean, these are beautiful, but you can see what's in here, so that's awesome. This is the P, however you say it. <laughs> I was going to say the PS de Resistance, but I'm not sure that's how you say it. My favorite from her, if you guys know anything, if you go way back in my Instagram archives when I was a bakery manager, our bakery did a huge blowout every year for Shark Week. Like, I live on the water. I love sharks. I love everything shark related. I don't want to get in the water with a shark, but I can appreciate them. I love, love, love. My backpack is, my backpack has flamingos on it, but my pencil pouch is sharks. 
um, for school. I, make, I have a makeup bag that's sharks. Like, I love shark stuff. Look at this. Oh, my God. I died. When I opened the bag, I was like, Dan, look at this. And I don't think he was as enthused as I am. But look at the whale shark. I love this. Hammerhead. I don't have any tattoos, but if I did, it would definitely be of like a hammerhead shark because I was like seven years old when my dad um, landed one, caught one off of a pier in St. Petersburg. For those of you who have ever been to St. Pete, there used to be a pyramid pier that was amazing. It had restaurants and it had um, an aquarium in it. And when I was a little kid, that's where we spent our time when I lived in South Florida. And I remember that my dad fought this hammerhead for a long time because that's a very, it was a very high pier. They finally landed it after, I would say, two hours. He finally gave up. They landed it. Of course, they, they released it. But when I saw that shark come out of the water, I had never seen anything like that. I didn't even know. Of course, I'm older. So we didn't have Discovery Channel, Animal Planet, um, you, if you got lucky, you got to see Jack Hanna on Saturday mornings. Um, but we didn't see, we weren't exposed like with the internet cause we didn't have the internet to all of the wonders of the ocean. So when I saw this hammerhead shark, I mean, imagine that I'm a little kid and I've never seen anything like that. It was prehistoric looking. It was powerful. I was able to, it was so, it was so tired that I was able to, um, pet, I say pet, touch um, his hide, because that's what I would call it, um, both ways. So I got to feel the texture of it and just be in awe of it. And my dad, I can still remember like my dad saying something along the lines of, you know, like this was a good fight and this was, you know, two, um, it was me against the shark. And um, in the end, the shark got tired and gave up, but my dad released it and it, went on to live for how it could still be alive today because they live for a really long time. But that's my shark story. Why I love hammerhead sharks. And I think that's where like my shark obsession started. So look at the fabric on the inside. Mm. It's like glitter splatter. Look at that. I love it. So Nani impeccable work. Run, don't walk to Instagram, go to the multi crafty hermit and get you some bags. And when you get them, share them on social media, share them on Instagram, share them on floss tube, excuse me, share them everywhere because that's how we find out about stuff. That's how I found out about Ani. Um, another purchase that I made for myself, um, the last thing I need is more linen. Um, but like side linen, it's like, you can't, I mean, I've called, I've emailed, they're covered up. I can't get any for myself, for the shop, for anything. Um, so I saw this on Stash Unload for like dirt cheap and I couldn't say no. I should have something to put behind it. So this is Maritime White. If you guys were curious about that, um, I was on the phone with Teresa Kitten Stitcher and she was like, it's like an old sale. I knew exactly what she meant. That was what's so funny. So it's kind of like a dingy, dusty, like beige off-white color. I'm going to stitch my plans for this and why I bought it and it's the perfect size. It's um, just an eighth um, and it was real cheap. Was my, my plans for this are Jeanette Douglas's Patriotic Sampler. I think the red and blue and white silks on this will just be amazing. So I did acquire that. That was my only, the only thing I acquired for myself um, other than I, my stitchy kindness. So yeah, that was exciting. Um, wow. I just zipped right through my list. We covered project bags, stitchy kindness, Dan's little plexiglass stitch starter, the Mirabilia news, the fact that we are going to retreat. And, uh, I showed you my stitchy progress. So I'm going to, um, veer off course just a little bit and go get something from right back here on the counter and share with y'all. Um, hold on. Okay, I'm still here. I hope you're still here too. All right, 
so if you follow me on Instagram, you know that I like to cook, I like to can, I like to um, do all that stuff. So this week, um, I talked last week about putting up some food. This week I did jalapenos, and what I wanted to show y'all, so I jarred, um, I pickled and jarred, we'll say 10 half pints. It was just what we had left from, um, Dan likes to stuff jalapenos with cream cheese, wrap them in bacon, and put them on the smoker. I know it's a heart attack snack, but um, he loves that, and we love it too. And we had a bunch left over, and what you can't waste, not want, not right, I'm not throwing them away. But what I wanted to show you that is so cool is, can y'all see that garlic? I don't know. It turned blue. Like, literally, it, it turned this, like, seafoam blue color. So, I've been canning for a long time. I can with garlic all the time. Um, I didn't know what that was about. So, I thought I'd share this with y'all because you never know when you might need it for trivia night, right? So, when introduced into a high acid environment, garlic cell membranes break down. Then, when they encounter copper, which is found in most water, bottled, distilled, filtered, boiled, no matter what, trace amounts of copper are found in most of the water supply in our country, even when you buy bottled water. When the broken down cells, the, when their protein is exposed to trace amounts of copper, it turns blue. So, y'all can Google that. I'm not making it up. I thought it was so incredibly cool. So, there's my blue garlic. Does not change the flavor. Does not change the texture. Does not change the taste. And it's totally safe to eat. Um, so, I thought that was pretty exciting. Another thing I did different when canning these this time was I used a product that's out um, by Ball um, that's called Pickle Crisp. So, I don't mind when I pickle stuff if it's not like fresh off the vine crunchy but Danny does not like anything mushy like he is a texture eater like he cannot handle mushy anything so um I did some research and I have found that you know you can pickle with lime and you can do all this other stuff but that's like a really intense process it's all chemistry right or you can buy this new pickle crisp product spray sprinkle an eighth of a teaspoon into your product um for a pint sized jar and it holds its crispness. They are delicious. He's already eaten. I just did these this weekend. Y'all know from Instagram. He's already eaten a whole jar. He put them on everything. He put them on a Caesar salad last night. But I guess it's flattering to me because I'm like, okay, he likes it. My hair is a mess. I'm not usually that person who messes with their hair, but I guess I probably am. But when you sit here and look at yourself, it's weird. Um, the only other thing I wanted to tell y'all about Canon. If you're interested in learning, there's so many awesome things. The Ball website has tons of information. Um, I would love to come visit each one of y'all and <laughs> show you how to can because I think it's a great skill and I think it's something that, that's really good, like family time. Like even if my kids aren't involved in the actual process of canning, they know what's going on. They watch me do it. Um, sometimes they help. Sometimes they don't. They like to help with berries. Um, not so much jalapenos, but I guess I can understand that. So whenever you're putting up stuff, this is a mistake that a lot of people make. So whenever you can with your rings, a lot of people store their canned stuff with the rings on. This is a huge canning no-no. And the reason is that you can have a false seal. So if this is sitting on your pantry, out in your pantry, let's pretend it's not jalapenos. Let's pretend it's barbecue sauce or strawberry jam or something that the kids might want to go in there and grab and bring out. Um, it can appear, it can even be depressed, like your button that pops when you can, can even be depressed when there's a false seal. And you would never know because you've got your ring on. So use your rings for your canon process and store without the rings on. Totally store without the rings on. Um, if you get a faulty seal, it's not the end of the world. You can reprocess or 
you can just throw them in the fridge and let let everybody eat it within the next two weeks. Most things, something highly acidic like like um, anything pickled, you're good for like I'd say like three weeks in the fridge. It never lasts that long anyway. The people eat it before then. But if you if you are at like a farmer's market or even if you're not a canner. If you're at the Cracker Barrel Country Store and you find some hot pepper jelly or some, you know, orange marmalade that you take home as a gift and it's canned in a mason jar, take the ring off. Um, you'd be surprised. You'd be surprised how disguising it can be. So, again, um, that's just a little tidbit of info for you. So, um, I went to the farmer's market this weekend. Um, Dan loves fried okra. I made fried okra yesterday. Um don't have any left of that to can or I would have processed something there but um, did do peppers this weekend what will happen next weekend stay tuned I don't know but I love canning maybe some salsa that's always fun in the summer all right let's move on to shop updates we're 30 minutes in that way we can get y'all out of here so you can go watch more floss tubers because I'm falling behind I didn't think I would ever get behind on floss tube because I watch it while I'm packing for the shop but I'm behind right now. All right. We've seen these. I may have shown them on my last video. I can't remember because I'm behind in everything. But these are Jeanette Douglas's next three installments of letters um, from Mom. They're not active on the shop yet. They will be probably this afternoon, tomorrow at the latest. So keep checking, okay? Um, the people who had pre-signed up, the ones who have paid have paid. The ones who haven't have lost their opportunity um, and lost their opportunity for future invoicing because, you know, I have to pay for invoices whether you pay them or not. So, yeah, that happened. Um, curved cotton candy scissors are back in, in stock. Um, I do owe a pair of these out. Don't worry, yours are on the way. I did also, um, I love these charts. This is happening. This is in my to do, my future to do pile. These have been restocked. So we have By the Bay's Spring Cove and Christmas Cove. So those have already been listed. We've restocked Patriotic Poppies. Those have been relisted. This was all listed a few days ago. Okay, here's what's not listed to the shop yet. So you're seeing it first. I'll get to it when I get to it. Probably will not be today because it is almost 12 o'clock noon. I still have to do all the shipping and packing for today because Mirabilia Madness might have side railed me. So I thought I'd record this video, then I'll pack while it's uploading. Then I have to, you know, go do my other full-time job and that's be mama. Um, all right. This is so cute. Mermaid Co. Bye Bye the Bay. Look at that. So you can see that I fell in love with the Cove series. So we've got Christmas, Spring, uh, Mermaid. We have Autumn. I love the perspective and I love the colors of these. These are awesome charts. We have Halloween. Look how cute. Look at the witch. I, like I said, I love the depth. This is a very imaginative and very talented artist. This isn't just like I'm going to draw. Um, no offense to people who put little houses and Christmas trees on things and we all stitch them and buy them because they're adorable. But the perspective and the distance, I mean, I think that's amazing. The, I love the colors in this. Look at the purple. Okay, now I have to do that too. Jeez. And the last cove that was available is Summer Cove. Again, you get those vibrant colors. I mean, this is all um, charted in DMC. Can you imagine if these were in silk? Ugh. But DMC is, I mean, DMC is a good sheen. It's, it's nice. And then I also ordered in um, uh, 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 Silver Creek Samplers Melody Song. So more mermaids. We're, I'm full on in summer beach mode. Y'all are going to see that. I just made a huge order from Hoffman of like a bunch of Little House Needleworks and Country Cottage Needleworks. Everything that has anything to do with beach summertime is on the way. So love that. I like how her hair like covers the bits. So cute. Very, very cool. And then the last chart. Um, 
the Halloween sampler I had forever in stock by Cottage Garden. Had it forever, and then um, Pam and Steph, because, you know, they're kind of a big deal, mentioned that, that it was going away. I hadn't heard this, um, and you guys sucked them up. And they're right, I can't order anymore. But I was able to get my hands on Christmas sampler. So this picture does no justice to this, and I don't know that I would stitch it in that gold color. Um, but you really can't even, I mean, it's not because it's in the bag, you just can't really see it. Because this is not in the bag. But um, it's so cute. So this is the Christmas sampler. If you got the Halloween sampler, get your hands on the Christmas sampler because I'm assuming that they too are going away. Super easy to read um, color chart. So do it. Get them. I like it. They're big. They're the fold out kind. I wish I could show you. Let's see if I can show you without showing you the chart. Nope. It's a fold out. So nice and big color. Super great chart. So that's it. Um, I've got so much to do, y'all. I'm not. I'm gonna cut it short here at 36 minutes. Thank you for. <laughs> Thank you for watching. Thank you for being amazing. Thank you for being kind to each other. Thank you for being a part of my stitchy life. Um, yeah, it's a big part of my life, and I love every one of y'all for it. So, if you're going to be at the Midwest Cross Stitchers retreat, please. Make sure to stop by and say hello wherever I'm at. I'm sure we're going to all be mingling. Um, and I'll see y'all soon. Have a great week.